for this beautiful day. This is a day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible inquires and tells us to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I can't speak for you. I can't speak even for my mother, but the redeemed, those who was redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Somebody tried to get up this morning and couldn't because their time was up. But we're here standing on grace and mercy. Father, we thank you. We take a minute and pause and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I, I'm going to come out there and I got a cordless mic. We need to talk to your Lord and your Savior. He woke you up. It wasn't the alarm clock. It wasn't your noisy neighbors. It wasn't that dog barking. It was Jesus who woke us up this morning and started us on this day. See, we might not all better sing together, walk together, talk together, but we can pray together. The Bible says one can send a thousand, two can send ten thousand. I love God's numbers. Lord, we thank you. I'm just asking pray as we bring forth this word that you've given me. That you will bless the hearers of the word, Father God, water the word, and you will give the increase. Somebody say increase. Increase. Oh, we have a spirit of expectation of increase. Yes, Lord. God, I'm not a prop preacher. I'm not a, a prosperity preacher. I'm your preacher. And use me to do your perfect will in this time, in this setting. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mother Beverly saw fit to add another hat to my many hats that I wear out here had to bring a change of clothes because the Lord told me to I don't want you preaching and what you set up in because you work in those clothes but when you speak on my behalf at least change clothes <laughs> anybody who preached the gospel understands that because when we come before the Lord as the microphone in his hand we want to say what he said so that we can experience what he said we can have amen amen and I don't know about you like I said I'm not a prop preacher so when God was instructing me on what he wanted me to do, I said, he about to do something big. Yes, God is about to move the mountain. Some of y'all been trying to climb the mountain, but that climbing day is over. He didn't make us no mountain climber. I ain't even trying to walk up no mountain. West Virginia be wearing me out, breathing hard, gas. He ain't make me no mountain climber. He said, do what? Speak. So we're going to speak, amen. Out of the gospel according to John, the 11th verse, very familiar word and I'm an exhorter type of preacher I mean I will say what the words say and I will say what the Holy Spirit told me the word says so if anybody if you think I'm gonna get up here and lose my breath it's not gonna happen that ain't me he made me more of a teacher than a preacher because I believe that the Bible says through the prophet Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 that my people are destroyed for lack of it's no this is not the time to be illiterate of the word of the living God these folks in office at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue will tell you anything you want to hear just so they can sit there for eight years. But I'm glad I serve a God who sits high and looks. Hello. So no matter what they see, I win. No matter what they say, I win. John chapter 11. I'm going to try and get through here because I was asking God. I said, Lord, this is 43 verses of scriptures and you know how you use me. But we're going we're gonna to do the best we can and somebody about to get blessed beyond blessings because... The, the, the title God gave me for this message is Instructions for Your Miracle. Yes. Instructions, y'all too quiet, y'all say it with me. Say instructions, instructions for my miracle. my miracle. It's personal. This is personal. This is about you. It's not about me. It's not about Mother Beverly. It's not about my brother Keith who rode his motorcycle all the way from Columbus, Ohio. Y'all thought it was cold coming in your car. He rode that motorcycle all the way from Columbus, Ohio. Because his wife had a death in her family and she took the car to Cleveland, I believe, somewhere north. So I was like, wow, I didn't know you had a motorcycle. We would have rented you a car. But he said, the Lord told him to be here and he came on that. And I was texting him. I was like, why didn't he text me back? Now I see why. But we believe in being faithful to our God because God is more than faithful to us. Let us get into the word. And it reads on this wise. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Now it's important for us to recognize that at this time, Lazarus is just sick. I hear in the word and he's changing me up already off the notes. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and do what? God wants to heal the land. But what he told me today in particular, it begins with the man in the mirror. 
You can't go out there trying to save the neighborhood and try to save the church and try to save her if you are if you ain't okay. Come on. My sister was telling me she couldn't sing right because her body wasn't letting her do what she knows she's able to do. So sometimes your body just will prevent you from doing it. But once again, it was Lazarus who was sick. In verse 3, therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Now, there are times when our family members get sick and we'll go to church and say, Pastor, would you pray for this person? Would you pray for that person? They went to Jesus and said, hey, Lazarus is sick. You know, we go to man and say, can you pray with me? Can you pray with me? And we expect for him to be healed or something, but they went to Jesus. That's a difference. Amen. You need to follow this. Therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold him thou loveth sick. Verse 4. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death. It's not. This sickness, and I've been in that position before where I went to the hospital and prayed for people and I don't care what it looked like. God told me, they said, this sickness is not to death. You need a, you need a chair, sister? You need a chair? Keith, can you get her a chair? We ain't gonna let no lady stand up and... I ain't trying to have Mother Beverly give me a beating for not handling me. Got women. We got more chairs, too. So they went to Jesus and said, Lazarus is sick. Right now, he's just six. Verse five, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. I, I found it peculiar that the Bible pointed that out, that Jesus loved them three. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still the same place where he was. So that had to amaze anybody who's ever read this. It's not the fact that he's sick and the sister said, hey, the man you love is sick. Jesus sat back in his chair two more days. See, that, that's a lesson within itself because we as believers, we so quick to jump and run like we the fireman. But you got to do what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. And I'm not just telling you something I ain't done myself because my brother was shot seven times in Columbus, Ohio. And I was up on a ladder in the church working on something and the deacon was holding the ladder when I got the call. I put the phone on the speakerphone. They said, your brother was just shot in the hospital. He might not make it. The Lord said, finish what you're doing on the ladder, then go. See, we got to learn how to listen to the, to the Holy Spirit. We can't just react in our, because we ain't got no power to do nothing. I ain't no physician. I'm not even going to get into the ICU. I can get to a window and look in there, but that's the closest I'm going to get. So we have to learn no matter how bad things look, God is still in control. Six, when he had heard, therefore, he was sick, he abode there two days, seven. Then after that, he said to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. Basically saying, believers, that we ain't never got to be scared of darkness because greater is he that's in us than we that's in the world. No matter where God send you, you got the light with you. Amen. It may have been dark before we got here, but when we got here, the light came on. Right. I've been here since like 8.45 this morning and it was gloomy and dark for a while. I just started walking around speaking in tongues, praying and proclaiming the name of Jesus and I saw the light come on. We are the light of the world. Amen. Somebody, it's sure is stormy. Well, then turn up. <laughs> Time to get lit. If you're thinking it's dark, set it off. You're the light. Amen. You sitting there and look like, well, I want them to send The sinners can't turn the light on. We got the light. Amen. Y'all can talk if you want to. I'm going to preach anyway. We online too, by the way. So that's why we up here. I don't want to. Somebody's hair might be messed up. Like, why he put me on Facebook? <laughs> These things say he after he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Watch this. Verse 12. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be it Jesus spake of his death? But they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. And then Jesus made it plain. Lazarus is dead. Somebody say Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. This is a very important point to what I'm going to make at the end. So you need to understand that he's no longer sick. He's dead. And he's not dead because Jesus waited to get there. How many of us in our lives said, well, if Jesus would have did this, if Jesus would have did that, if this would have happened, then this would have happened. Don't you got to understand that God is perfect? It's impossible for him to lie. He has a plan for every single thing he does. He knows the hairs on our, my fault, I ain't got no hair, but y'all know what I'm saying. 
He knows that. And we get, we, we, we get into this human, I, I call it a human condition. My back, my neck, my elbow. Marcy said one time, mother, sister Marcy said one time, whoever said these was a goat in years was lying. <laughs> well, since that's not a scripture, they was lying. Because <laughs> the Bible says my ladder will be greater. That's up to you. Speak those things that are not as though they are, and you will have what it says. So Jesus made it plain to them because they was puzzled. They said, if he sleep, he do well. He said, bro, Lazarus is dead. The Lord was telling me with this, this audience here and the ones online that there were some things you got to let die. Y'all kind of quiet on that one because we don't like to hear that word. It's kind of creepy. There were some things you have to let today. There were some things you have to let die. Yes, sir. Because God is doing something that you don't understand. And once again, I'm not talking about something I haven't experienced because I was in Ohio preaching and there was a 11 year old girl who was my bishop's granddaughter who ate too, too many pills by accident. She was 11 years old and she passed away and we was at the funeral and all her classmates was there and me and my senior pastor was sitting next to her looking at each other and said, shit, we kicked the casket so she can get up? We both had the same mindset without talking to each other. And God said, this is not that time. But if you don't believe that God can raise the dead, why are we doing what we doing? Come on, sir. Now, if he can raise the dead, what can he do? Come on. My neck and my back. What's that to God? He raises the dead. Jesus told him he's dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that you may believe. You see that? So that you can believe. Come on. He wants you to believe in him. Yes, sir. You know, people got them little stimulus checks and thought they hit the lottery. <laughs> Until it was done. Come on. Uh, and I, I, I dare to witness, wonder how many people even tithed off of that. Well, this is kind of extra money, so I don't believe I'm supposed to tithe off of this. It's like, we, we ain't got no problem tithing off of $2, but let it be 2000 then we get mathematically, well, I only went to math nine, so I don't understand what that, <laughs> carried a one. <laughs> then said Thomas, we all know who Thomas was, called Didymus, the fellow disciple let us go that we may die with him <laughs> he said let's go work so we can die with him I mean I ain't gonna act like I walk on water there's sometimes I do the same thing to God you be thinking you know what God is saying you be so far left -field. he said didn't I tell you to go right well, what you doing left didn't I tell you to go to Mercy Street Ministry on Saturday what you doing here at the football game or fishing or at the Y'all can be quiet if y'all want. Didn't I tell you to go sing? What you doing here? I gave you that voice from me. Look where you at. Right. Come on. You in Walmart. We, we forget. It's a human condition. We think we're here for jobs, wives, kids, spouses. And the Bible clearly said, if you do not forsake a what? Oh. How are you going to stand before God one day and say, well, Lord, Walmart had a sale. How are you going to? I'm puzzled sometimes. I got people to help keep me accountable to this, this preaching that we preach. Then Jesus came found who was laying in the grave four days. Somebody say four days. Four days. Now I was going to study to see what happens to the human body after it's been dead for four days, but that would have made the sermon too long. Church folk don't like to sit in church so long. That buff baby calling her name. Come and eat at the table. Y'all know how y'all get Pastor, get long, your stomach start growling. He usually about wrapping up right about now. Because <laughs> I was both places. I used to be out there and now I'm up here, so I understand the feeling. He should be wrapping up about now. My stomach is telling me. Lazarus is dead. Jesus waited four days. Somebody say four days. Four days. So without even knowing, I used to be a, a, my last job before I stopped, went to full-time ministry at the age of 30. I'm 53 now, so 23 years of full-time ministry, no check. No income, nothing by faith. Um, I used to be an officer at OSU Hospital, so we used to have to release dead bodies to the morgue when they come to get the body, you know? And so I had to go down there a few times, so I used to stare at them things like, that's a table. Once the soul is gone, it's not there. Right. It's an empty thing. And God was teaching me before I got into ministry what I'm supposed to be focused on. I think the Bible also says, let the dead bury the dead. So I was sitting there, four days dead. The brain ain't working, heart ain't working, lungs ain't working. So he, he, he dead, there's no question about it. Because we hear stories of a person dying 
and they get resuscitated, right? CPR to come back in like a, like what 15, 20 minutes, maybe maybe some rare case. Anybody ever heard anything longer than a day where somebody came back? Jesus made it made it clear. He stayed long enough so you would know beyond a shadow of any and every doubt that he was dead. Amen. So God was telling me to tell you that there were some things in your life that has to die. Amen. If you got to wait four days, the weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Look, I know I'm preaching and you're looking at me like you watch TV, but you need to think about what I'm telling you because we're going to do some things at the end of this thing that's going to determine if you live here and what the Spirit is saying to the church. Okay, so if there's some things in your life that needs to die so God can be glorified so that they can believe, he's trying to save your household, you need to think about those things as we're talking. That's why it's so important I do not rush over certain things. I'm not trying to get in trouble with the Lord. So four days, 18, now Bethany was nine to Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. Jews came, Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. So we see the stage being set. How many of y'all are familiar with the hand of God? So you see when God is setting up things. See, people see Mercy Street Ministry and think food, think clothes, but not understand this about their soul, Amen. their eternal salvation. He sets people up for their come up. He's setting the stage. And honestly, it's not even about Lazarus. It's really not. So many people miss it. It's not about Lazarus. Come on. Why? Because Lazarus is dead. Come on. <laughs> for four days. Let me tell you a little a nugget here. I, I share with people in the ministry all the time. I say, all the devil got is bad stuff and bad news. Your past stuff. He's going to bring your past stuff in your face. Dead stuff. That's all he has is dead stuff. He has no rhema word. He has no logos word. He has no prophetic word. So when somebody's bringing you that stuff, you knew who they were on assignment from. I don't know who this is for, but you need to understand who that's coming from. But when Jesus is talking to you, I don't care how long it's been, he's about to resurrect it. Amen. Let me stay on pace. Amen. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was still in the house. Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. She just explained to us her level of faith. Come on. We've all been there. Lord, if you would have been here, I still would have my hair. I mean, we come up with all kinds of things to blame God. God, if you would, my car wouldn't have broke down, uh, my job, but I still I would have got that raise. Uh, we come up with all kinds of stuff to blame God for. You can be quiet. I know I'm human. I ain't the only one. I know it. Mother Beverly said all the time, Lord, I could have been taller. <laughs> if you was here, Jesus, I would be taller. Sister Marcy's like, oh. My latter days, would feel, I would feel so great. You know why you can't feel? I'm going to tell you because I'm, I'm that type of preacher. The reason why you can't feel the way you want to feel because you don't know how to act. You be up on roofs doing roof and everybody know how she is. That's the only way he can slow you down. <laughs> I didn't mean to pick your pocket. 22, but I know that even now, that's what she said. Whatsoever thou will ask God, God will give thee. Look at somebody and say, God about to give it to you. Y'all don't sound convinced. Come on. God about to give it to you. That's why I said, I'm going to take it. God about to give it to you. God, that's what this sermon really is. God about to give it to you. And for the devil, oh, you did it. Now you're going to get it. See, he thought he was doing something bad. But he was just pushing you to God. Because you had got lax in your prayer life and your fasting life and going to church and being, oh, COVID, I don't know if it's safe to go to church. What you mean it ain't safe to go to church? But I saw you at the football game with a thousand people screaming half naked. But it ain't safe to go to church? Come on. I saw you in Walmart. You wasn't six feet apart because I heard your whole conversation because you was on my neck. But it ain't safe to go to church? Come on. What happened to the body? How is it not safe? That's the one place where it's safe. <laughs> if I'm going to fall dead, I'm going to fall dead. Take me to the king. <laughs> Martha said unto him, I know that he shall arise again. No, this is what Jesus said, sorry. Said unto thy brother shall arise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection and the last day. Ain't that how we do? She telling Jesus, Jesus. She telling Jesus what the words say. She said, Jesus, I know he will rise again in the resurrection and the last day. <laughs> Jesus sitting there like, Lord, have mercy. I got to do another Bible study. I call these things teachable moments teachable moments but he's talking to us because she didn't have the New Testament so <laughs> she couldn't read it 
Martha said to him, I know that he will survive the of resurrection the last day. Jesus said to her, I am. Somebody say, I am, I am. the resurrection Resur and the life. He that, he that believeth in me, in me. though he were dead, dead, yet shall he live. Shall he you can put your hands together for that one time. Amen. I'm going to have to give another testimony because that was kind of weak. I got a little baby cousin. Um... I was in Columbus, Ohio, and I was married then, and um, they got a call, they said, look, she got rushed to the hospital, she lived in North Carolina, and the Holy Spirit quickened me, it was like one in the morning, quickened me, and I said, um, what you want me to do? He said, pray, that's all my cousin asked me to do is pray, we was like brothers because we first cousins, he said, would you just pray, and I said, I rolled over to do like we do, just roll over do a quick prayer and go back to sleep, the Lord says, nope, get on an airplane, go to North Carolina, and lay hands on her. I looked at my wife, I said, hey, I gotta go to North Carolina. Got a ticket, went to North Carolina. Got there the next day, walking through all the people in the hallway, the church folks was there praying. And to be honest with you, my spirit discerned that they was all pronouncing death. They all was preparing for the worst. Y'all know how some people do. Well, you might as well get ready. We got a friend in Columbus, another story, who they said he was dead, took his wedding ring off his finger, told the wife he done. Mm -hmm. He's still living to this day. Hey, yes, he is. But my little baby cousin, so I go through all them people, yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So I walk through all the religious folks, went to the room, laid hands on her. She started having a seizure. She's alive to this day. She's been praising and answering for the Lord, living for Jesus. He is the resurrection and the life. We have to believe what this word says, because you never know when you're going to get caught in the action. And the thing about I love about Jesus is it's not us. We just carry the glory. We are not the glory. Come on. We, we just carrying it. Like that vessel there. If I filled it up with something, it would just be used to carry it. But it is not it. Somebody say, Jesus is it. Jesus is it. He says, I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth on me. Do you believe? Yes. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whatsoever liveth, whosoever liveth, and believeth in me shall never die. Then he asked her, believest thou this? You are not ever going to die. You ain't got to be excited about that. It helps me when I'm traveling and people see the Jesus van and, and throw up that finger and they ain't giving me a thumbs up. I was like, God bless you anyhow. You ain't got to love him. I do. I'll take it. Right. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world and when she, said, when she had said so, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, The master come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. I just heard the Holy Spirit tell me that what we're going to do at the end, you're going to have to move quickly. I am not going to tarry. I'm a very disciplined type of person. Praise be to God. Never drank, never smoked, never tried it. I had other things. I got seven kids. I should tell you about that story. But never drank, never smoked, never tried drugs, never took medicine. I, I, God just kept me from that stuff. He made me that. I'm a pescatarian now. I can't believe that because I used to love chicken. But I don't eat chicken no more. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe it thou the Christ. Now Jesus was not yet come into in 30 in the town, but was the place where Martha him. The Jews then which were with her in her house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, y'all hear that? When they saw Mary, see you got line point line, precept upon precept. They ain't seen Jesus, but they, they saw, they're watching Mary. And remember, Mary believes that Lazarus is dead. Somebody's always watching you, saints. Come on. Yes, they, they, they not watching you when on payday, they watching you on the weekdays, W-E-A-K days. I'm gonna see how saved they are now that somebody done broken their house or they done wrecked their car. Don't you, you, ever, you, ever, you ever got a saved friend one time and you thought they was really saved and something happened, a cuss word, like, what? what? I, thought, I thought you was a Christian. I am, but sometimes I cuss. Sometimes. Well, guess what? We got some oil for you. We can get that, we can get that cussing demon up out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you're still cussing, don't feel condemned. Don't, don't feel bad. Peter, Peter had a little problem too. But I'm just saying, you know, you be. A pre I'm talking preachers, so I hang around a lot of preachers. I said, like, what, 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 what syllable is that? <laughs> the Jews then came because they saw Mary. Follow her saying, she go up unto the grave to weep there. So that's what they thought Mary was going to do. 
Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Didn't we just go through this? We just went through this with your sister. Now you're saying the same thing. If you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Holy Spirit is trying to talk to somebody. I don't know who you are, what you're going through, or what you're about to go through, but you can rewind this message and realize that when we go through things, there is a response that we have to have that will dictate the level of faith that we have in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we have. Amen. I don't go to church for nothing. I don't pay tithes for nothing. I don't shout for nothing. I don't speak in tongues for nothing. I don't fast for nothing. I do all these things because I believe in what I'm doing. Yes, sir. If I heard a preacher say one time, if you don't believe it, why are you doing it? Come on. Some people think they can fake it till they make it, but Matthew 7 21 says, everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will not enter the kingdom of heaven, but those that do the will, there is something that you are required to do. Glory to God. There's something that you're required to do. There's going to be something you're required to do at the end of this sermon. Then when Mary was coming, Jesus, and saw Jesus, she worshiped at his feet. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, the Jews also weeping, which came with her and groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Now you know Jesus knew. Jesus knew where he was laying. So when Jesus asks you a rhetorical question, something else is still going on. I've learned to look at key things in the Bible and, and try to see what God is tell, telling Sean. Because we know Jesus knew where he was laid. He knows everything. We almost there. And said, where have you laid him? In 35, Jesus wept. Now, a lot of people have speculated through the annals of time why Jesus wept. If I gave this mic to every last one of y'all, all y'all have a different reason why we all believe Jesus wept. He ain't never revealed to me why he wept, so I ain't gonna sit here and act like I know. But the Bible says he wept. I think that's the only place in Scripture, you can correct me, there's some preachers out there, is this the only place in Scripture where Jesus wept? Yeah, only. Except for on the cross. Did he ain't weep on the cross, did he? The Bible says Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man which opened eyes of the blind and caused even this man should have not died. So he's doing the same thing Mary and Martha said. They're all thinking in the past tense. See, when people come to comfort you, when you're going through stuff, be, be mindful of what they're saying to you. Don't let them speak death into your life. Come on, sir. These are, this is called an ear gate. You have to guard this gate. You can't let stuff, everything, everybody get in your ear and tell you what God did not say. True. Know how many times people have tried to word curse me and it's completely impossible because there's a prophet in the Old Testament by the name of Balaam that tried to get paid to, to curse. He said, I cannot curse what God is blessed. Let me tell you something. Every last one of you people here is blessed because before your mama knew your daddy, God had you in mind. Yes, sir. I hear West Virginia saying, yeehaw, West Virginia. It ain't about, you ain't, your mama and daddy ain't had no idea where they was going to drop you. You could be European, far as you know. You ain't have. That's why people crack me up trying to rep a, a state or a city or an area code when the Bible clearly says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell into it. Everywhere my foot tread is the Lord's house. It's the Lord's kingdom. Every you from West Virginia? Well, you country? No, I ain't country, but I got a cowboy hat. <laughs> I refuse to claim a set. This is all God's. See, it's a mentality that you have to have to receive the thing that God has for you. I hear the Holy Spirit reminding me about an old woman by the name of Sarah, a Sarai. Old and wrinkly. Oh, done, past baby time. I know about babies. I got seven of them and I was here every time they came out. She was old. And what, what did she do when the, the man said, oh, your wife Sarah's going to have... She laughed. And what, what, what happened? He says... Is there anything impossible, too hard for the Lord? See, that's that human condition I was talking about. When I pray for people, I don't pray for your condition. I don't pray for your back, your neck, your knees, your feet. I pray for what Jesus said. He says, by his stripes. That ain't got nothing to do with you. See, you can't pray the problem. You have to pray the answer. Yes, sir. I'm trying to help somebody. Come on, Come on. And I hate to say this, but the Spirit just told me that some of y'all got some pastors that be praying wrong over y'all. I don't know who they are. That's why I don't got no problem saying it. 
It's unfortunate that some people didn't get their training right and they pray the wrong stuff. I remember one time I was praying and I was busy rebuking the devil. I was lighting him up. And finally the Lord let him talk back. He says, brother, I'm not doing it. I, have, I am not the one afflicting you. Have you ever read Job? I was minding my business, going to and fro. And the Lord said, hey, have you considered? Considered. He wasn't thinking about Job because Job had a prayer life. Job fasted. Job did everything. He, he went to church. He tithed. He went, he's looking for that one that was halfway doing stuff. One foot in the club, one foot in the church. Halfway. That's who he's looking for because the devil don't want no hard fight. He's looking for an easy fight. He didn't he want to mess with Job. Let me get back on this. We're almost there. So Jesus, therefore, in 38, we almost done. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. This is a very important point and probably the last one I have to make before Lazarus get up. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. That's very important. Because when the Lord gave me this sermon, he told me that the stone to us today is doubt. There are some of you that have doubt in your life that you're allowing to keep you from the, having the things that God said you can have. I mean, I had to deal with mine. When preachers get a word, we got to examine ourselves first with the word and make sure we ain't being hypocrites and standing up here looking crazy. But he, there's doubt. There's doubt. You, you, you have conditioned God to move him when only you think he can move. You have to hear your kind of music, be at your kind of church. God ain't limited to none of that. We have, we have made him that stone. And I said, Lord, why did you tell them to take away the stone when you got angels at your command, when you could just blink or wink and the stone could be done with? He says, because the people have to move the stone to experience the miracle. You don't got to get excited about it. It's going to happen regardless. We all have stones in our lives. Doubt. I mean, I got seven kids, five boys and two girls, and sometimes it don't look like a few of them going to make it. I'd be like, never would have made it. I'm like, oh, Lord. But then I go back to when I was that kid, making my grandmama and mama pray for me because they ain't know where I was or what I was doing. And they just look at me saying, never would have. <laughs> but the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not. Depart from it. Look at me now. I'm sitting here preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Should have been dead a hundred times over. I remember one time, I, real quick, I was with a friend, and my friend said, come on, let's go for a ride. Went for a ride. This man then walked me into a crack house. We in the door, and two minutes into the door, the door come kicking in, SWAT come in. There's a 45 and a flashlight in my face saying, don't move. I said, I can't. I got a refrigerator between my legs. Because they used the refrigerator to put it against the door to keep the police out, but it didn't work. I could have been dead and gone. One slip of the trigger, and somebody else would be preaching this sermon. And we all got those kind of testimonies. Amen. You think God saved you all through all that to be here and